Thank you very much. We speak about blue and green. I will present the gray, <laughs> please. I am honored to be invited as a speaker on the conference. Very loud voice. I will tell, <coughs> and also I am pleased to say hello to our honored guests. I will tell you the story. Can you put yeah, the first slide? This has very big echo. Is will it be like that? Uh, uh, I will tell you the story how the industry and the government together implemented strict, appropriate rules for salmon farming, and how these rules transformed the companies from a long struggle to be the best salmon farming companies in the world. So it's a good story in 12 minutes, 11 from now, I guess. So put on your seatbelts. Now we start. Uh, just as uh, the minister showed us about uh, the Faroe Islands, I will also take a slide of, of, on this because we can say that the salmon that we farm is, uh, originates, it has a, a natural home in the, uh, around the Faroes, and uh, that's why it's a very good place to produce salmon. And uh, the temperatures uh, in the sea is uh, not varying very much. It means that the quality of the salmon is very consistent through the year. And this is the temperature the salmon is adapted to grow in. And this is a basic part of uh, to have a good quality and consistent quality summer and winter. And Faroe Islands is not a very big uh, region or country. Uh, we have uh, maybe 20 fjords, you could say. And our company, the company I represent, is uh, located in the west. And we raise fish in the wild, we are proud to say. Uh, the beginning of the salmon farming in the Faroes took a play, place in the late 70s. And uh, of course, people did not know what to do. But regional policy was a big part of this to create jobs around the islands. And the salmon prices at that time were very high. But this led to 70 farming companies farming in the fjords, and that was up to five to six farmers per uh, fjord, and uh, many salmon generations as well. So uh, you could say this was good conditions for major problems. <laughs> and uh, of course, this led to, uh, to, uh, to disease crisis. Uh, we had major disease problems. And uh, in 91 and 92, the number of companies decreased from 70 to 20 by economical push out. And uh, then we went down to uh, one uh, farmer per fjord in average. The things became better. And then we had the first rise of the industry, you could say. We had a big increase of salmon production again. Because of fewer companies per fjord, it was much easier to administrate or to run the, uh, the fish farming in the fjords. And we were, we were lucky as well, very good vaccines were introduced, and several good uh, chemicals for treatment of sea lice came on the market at the same time. But still, the production in the Faroe Islands was not competitive with Norway, Scotland, and Chile. So uh, this was much better, but not perfect. And. Uh, so, so people, both in the government and in the industry, saw that if we should make a better, a better environment for fish farming, we needed to, to do something more. And in the, one major step was taken by the government. They implemented one salmon farmer per fjord policy. It means that if there was two salmon companies in the fjord, they should all the time try to bring it down to one and never give a new license in the fjord. So the, the one company that was there could uh, administrate the fjord as good as possible. Uh, and also they did one good thing, they opened up the licenses so you could produce as much as you wanted, as long as you could prove uh, sustainability, so you did not harm the environment. So in Faroes we have free, free uh, licenses, but uh, it's yearly uh, allowances how much you can produce based on sustainability, and I think that's a very good thing. 
And furthermore, in 98, the Salmon Farmers Association asked for more stringent regulations <coughs> because this was a good that was implemented, but we, we thought we needed more. And in 99, we, so from Norway, was hired to make a suggestion to new regulations. And in the same time, we came to the second salmon crisis, and we had our first ISA outbreak in the Faroes in the year 2000. Salmon prices were very low, <coughs> and this led to a deep crisis for the industry. Only three companies survived, and, uh, but after five years of making new regulation, we finally reached uh, the 2003 reform, which uh, has been very good for us. And very good for the farmers and for the people that work in the companies, and also for the, uh, for the society as a, as a whole. Now we, we implemented that we should empty the fjords with fish after each generation. So we implemented all-in, all-out system. We learned it from other biological productions, like chickens. But this was not easy to implement, but it came in place. Per fjord, yes. And uh, also we had at least five kilometers distance between sites and minimum two months of following. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, we, we started to do active disease research. So we did not wait for diseases. We, we, we started on a proactive way of looking for diseases to, to detect them early, as an early warning system. We learned something from NATO. Uh, and after that, uh, or around those days, and after that, we have implemented in the Faroe Islands a traffic light system that uh, says that if you, if you have a good production, you can increase. If you have a, a poor production, you need to, uh, to reduce. And we are monitoring the bed, seabed. If there is much pollution on the seabed, you need to reduce your production. And, if, uh, the sea, uh, and also, if the seabed is in a good condition, you can increase. And I think this is very important economical way to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to use. <coughs> and also for sea lice numbers and use of chemicals against sea lice. If you have big sea lice problems, you need to reduce your production. And on the other hand, if you can show that you have good sea lice uh, counts that there, we shall do, you can increase your production. The same goes for mortality rates. The, the business that have high mortality rates need to reduce, and the other one can increase. Here we see a production uh, uh, statistic of the Faroe Islands salmon production from the year of 87, and we see, we see the two tops and the two downfalls. Uh, but now we can see that it has been sustainable for a long time and the stable production around 80,000 ton. And uh, now I will show you some biological uh, f figures that uh, prove that this was very good what we implemented. The first thing will be the mortality percentage, uh, how many fish dies per year. Now, from stocking to harvest in a per generation. And then we see that after that, we have this new uh, reform in 2003. Uh, the mortality rates goes very much down. Compared with the rest of the world, we, we can see we are, unfortunately, the gap is not that wide now that it has been, but still we are very, very much ahead of uh, the, the mean figures of the world, the medium figures. And this is very important too for a salmon uh, uh, production. Uh, and also the growth rate increased dramatically the years before 2003. This is a, this is a figure you, the people in the industry will understand, but if you are on three, it's a good number down around two and a half is a bad growth. So the growth rate increased very much and that is of course very important. And also we can show that the feed conversion, how much feed we use to produce one kilo of salmon, decreased from 1.20 plus to 1.12 around in average. And this is very good. 
and the product quality increased uh, very much as well. <coughs> uh, not at least the consistency of the quality, but it became, the quality became very stable. And uh, before the reform, Faroe Island salmon has the lowest price in the market. You could read the uh, faxes back in, from those days and said the general salmon price this week is that and that, but from Faroe Islands you will get them one kroner cheaper, or maybe two kroner cheaper. Today the opposite is, is uh, uh, in place. Uh, in, in the US, for example, uh, I think Faroe Island salmon get one dollar more than salmon from other countries. And uh, so now we have the highest price in the world market, and that, that is, of course, very good. And here is about the reputation. Uh, this is one of our customers in New York. She says in this mail, <clears throat> I know you must be very proud that your salmon is universally considered the best in the world. <laughs> so so uh, we are proud of that. And summary, uh, one farmer per fjord, uh, all in all out system, active disease search, and traffic light system to, to adjust the production, has paved the way for a much better biological performance and established the recognition of the salmon from the Faroe Islands as the best in the world. Thank you.